question technique to understand. Let's get the intuition behind the key nearest neighbors technique. Let us take a concrete example. Let's say we have historical information about some people, lots of people. We're just showing some data here. In fact, we're not even showing all the attributes. So for every person, we have information on several attributes. And we also have our target attribute of the outcome, whether that person actually bought the product or did not buy the product. Okay, so this is our historical information. So we look at the historical information. Just for convenience, I have shown only a small part of the information. I have not even shown all the attributes. So this is what we have. Now, along comes a completely new case for which we know the values of all the attributes like age and gender and income and lots of other attributes. Now our question is, will this person be a buyer or a non-buyer? That's our classification problem right here. The truly simple intuition is when you're given a new case, you classify it based on the K most similar cases in the historical data. Okay. For now, let the word similar just stay there without further clarification. We just want to find somehow cases that are very similar to, uh, to the case that we are trying to classify. Okay, so we're going to base our classification on K, most similar cases. Now, what is K? Just a number. It could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever, right? How do you select that? We'll come to all of those. Right now, let's just get this intuition going. Translating that to our earlier example, we have our historical data on the left. We have a new case that we need to classify on the right. So we're going to do the classification based on the most similar cases, K most similar cases to this case in this historical data. Okay, and again, for now, we will not worry about what this similar means. And let's assume for now that we are considering K as three. Why three? Talk about it later. Okay, so we want, let's say by some means, we find that the most similar cases are this, this, and this. Okay, notice that the first is a buyer, second is a non-buyer, third is a non-buyer. So we have a majority of non-buyers and therefore we'll classify this new case as a non-buyer. As simple as that. Let's take a very concrete example. So let's say you have a neighborhood, a neighborhood with a number of homes. And these are all the homes which we have colored in red because they happen to vote Republican. Okay, let's assume that this is a geographical neighborhood for convenience. Okay, so now you also have a bunch of homes within the neighborhood which are colored blue because they tend to vote Democratic. Now there are two homes, A and B, as shown in this slide, for which we don't know the classifications. Okay, maybe they just moved in to the neighborhood. So we don't know what is their political preference. How might we find out or how might we predict the values of, you know, of the, of the political affiliations for A and B? Okay, so for A, one way we can go about it and say, let's just look at the neighbors of A. K neighbors, let's say three neighbors, okay? We have one neighbor of A, and of course we know the colors, the political affiliations for all the neighbors. For this neighbor of A is a Democrat, whereas let's say these are the other two closest neighbors, either these two or these two, whatever, they're Republicans. So the majority of neighbors of A are Republican, and therefore we might say that it is more likely that A is a Republican. Of course, we could still be wrong, but that might be our best guess. Similarly, for B, the more of the neighbors are democratic, and we may say, well, therefore, we will classify B as a democrat. This is the intuition behind K nearest neighbors. By neighbors, we mean cases that are very similar. In this example, we literally took neighbors to mean closeness, geographical closeness, but that's just 
uh, an analogy. Okay, that's just a way to understand this notion of neighborhood. In the actual technique, when we talk about a neighbor, we are saying something that is very similar. And of course, what is this notion of similarity? We'll be talking about shortly. Okay, of course, the automatic question that comes up is, well, in the previous slide, you just said, let's consider three neighbors. Why did you say three? Why not one, two, five, ten, one hundred? What's the logic? What's the rationale? Well, in this particular technique, we don't just select one value of k and go with it. Instead, as you will see shortly, we'll consider many different values of k and then choose the one that seems to perform the best. Right? Remember, we already spoke about data partitioning. Right? We'll partition the data into training and test, and we'll build the model on training, then test, evaluate the model on the test data. So same thing here. So on the training data, we'll try many different values of k, and we'll see how it, which value of k performs best on the training data, and then we'll find out how it works on the test data. So that is how you determine k. Now, if your k, if you consider too high a value for k, then your model lacks specificity. So for this case, let's say we considered instead of one neighbor, instead of three neighbors, we had considered 50 neighbors. Okay. In which case, what will happen is we'll consider all of the homes here, right? And then we'll clear, we'll vote based on a majority, right? And that means that we lose specificity, right? We're just saying, okay, in order to make a prediction, consider everything and just go by the average. Okay, so you lose specificity. On the other hand, if you consider very few cases, then what might happen is that your prediction may be based on just a few, uh, you know, irregular cases. Okay, what might be called as noise. Okay, just some uh, anomalies, and you may be latching onto that. In fact, for this example, if we have chosen k equals one, then for this person, the closest neighbor is a Democrat, and for this person, the closest neighbor is a Republican. Okay, and we would have gone based on just that without looking at a somewhat larger picture. Okay, so choosing K is a balance between too much generality and too much specificity. Finally, the time has come for us to look at what do we really mean by similarity. Let's take a concrete example. So we've got a data set in which there are only two attributes, again for simplicity, and the two attributes are income a number of cars and the target attributes is ownership of a boat whether they own a boat or not again the caveat is in real life two attributes would hardly be enough to predict something like ownership of a boat we would need far more attributes but for exposition I'm just considering two attributes okay so based on the value of these two attributes we want to predict whether a person owns a boat or not of course for the data, historical data, we already know the income and the number of cars and whether they own a boat or not. For new cases, let's say this is a company that sells boats and they have the income and number of cars for a bunch of people and they want to find out which of them is likely to buy a boat and which of them is not likely to buy a boat. And they're going to make base that decision on historical data. Okay, so let's say you're given somebody who has an income of $85,000 and has two cars. So the question is, will this person be a good candidate to buy a boat or not? And we want to do that based on historical information. So then based on the uh, intuition about K nearest neighbors, what we would like to do is to choose some value for K. Let's say the value for K is going to be three. And then we want to find out which of the cases in this uh, historical data are closest or most similar to this particular case okay that's what we are trying to do we are trying to uh, clarify our notion of what do we mean by similarity so which are the neighbors of this case now when we talk about neighbors we are obviously talking about distance okay now earlier we had spoken about distance from a geogra geographical perspective in the political example that i had given earlier but here the notion of geographical distance hardly makes any sense. We've got a case with income at 95,000, number of cars one, 
and we have got a new case whose income is 85,000 and the number of cars is 2. And we now have to find out what is the extent of similarity between these two or alternately what is the distance between these two cases. Of course, the notion of geographical distance makes no sense whatsoever. However, if we consider this as a point 85,000 comma 2 and we consider this as a point 95,000 comma 1 then we can always calculate the distance between two points using the Pythagorean theorem. So if we did that, the distance would be you know, square root of 85,000 minus uh, 95,000 or vice versa, the whole square, plus 1 minus 2 or 2 minus 1, the whole square. Right? The order doesn't matter because we are squaring it, so uh, if it's my negative, it will still become positive. This is the distance between these two cases. Okay, and the distance will turn out to be roughly 10,000 because 95,000 minus 85,000 is 10,000. 10,000 whole square is you know 10 raised to the power 8 or 100 million plus 1 minus 2 the whole square is just 1. It's really small compared to the magnitude of 10,000. So the distance will turn out to be 10,000.000001 or something like that. Okay, so clearly since we are calculating the distance. We need the predictor attributes to be numeric, right? You can't have colors like red and blue here. Then how will you calculate the distance? They all have to be numbers. And since we are talking about a classification problem, obviously the target attribute has to be categorical, right? Because you're trying to classify it into one of a few categories. So the target attribute has to be categorical for K and for classification and the predictor attributes have to be numeric. Okay. Now, regression is also possible with K and N, but we'll talk about that later in the course. Let's consider some examples of distance calculations. So if we had the previous case, 95,000 comma 1, 85,000 comma 2, the distance, as we already said, is roughly 10,000. If we had 95,050 comma 1 and 85,000 comma 2, in other words, the two are very similar except that the income went up by 50. Then the distance will be roughly 10,050. Okay. Now, suppose the first person's number of cars went up by 3 and the second person still remains the same. Okay. Which is that the number of cars went up from 1 to 3. It's very significant. Right? One car versus three cars. And the income is the same, 95,000, 95,000, right? But if you calculate the distance, it will still come out as 10,000, very similar to the first case, right? Where the first thing that we considered, 85,002, 95,001, 85,002, 95,003, we would think that the distance should actually be quite different because uh, this case is the, the third case that we considered is very, very different from the first case. But the reason you're getting 10,000 as the distance is because the magnitude of incomes is so much larger than the magnitude of number of cars. And therefore, that magnitude dominates distance calculations. Okay. In fact, even if you increase the number of cars to 5, the distance still remains as 10,000 because the first number dominates. The incomes are so much higher than the number of cars. Okay. So that seems to be a slight problem. It doesn't seem to show our notion of neighbor really well. Okay, So distance seems to be insensitive to the number of cars and highly sensitive to the income. Okay, So in order to handle this problem, in order to mitigate this problem, what we really need to do is to normalize the variables so that the incomes are not able to dominate distance calculations. In other words, the, the, the scale of incomes and number of cars should be approximately the same. right? Both of them should have the same kind of scale. How do you do that? You can do that by a process of normalization or standardization. Okay? That is, instead of using the raw values of income, and in this example, I've just considered age as opposed to number of cars, you calculate, you take the mean for each of these attributes and you do 
the value minus mean divided by the standard deviation of that attribute. So in other words, if you have the incomes, so you find the mean income, which is 44, you know, 44,462.8. So for any given income, rather than using the income itself, you do that income minus the mean. So 25,000 minus 44,000, roughly 19,000, divided by the standard deviation, which is 8,600. Okay, so it's roughly minus two something, right? So instead of 25,162, this number will just be minus two, right? Now look at the formula. What is the formula doing? The formula is saying x minus mean divided by standard deviation. The numerator is just the difference of the value from the mean, right? The mean is 44, the actual value, the mean is 44,000, actual value is 25,000. So the difference is 19,000. It is 19,000 units away from the mean. Now that by itself doesn't carry too much information. If you divide it by the standard deviation, you're saying this value is so many standard deviations away from the mean. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how far away it is from the mean. Okay, and when you take all the attributes and convert them like this, then they all have very similar kind of ranges. For every value, you're not saying it's absolute value. Instead, you're saying, how far is it away from its own mean? Is it a very high value? Is it a very low value? That's what you're doing. So let's take two examples. Let's say x is 100, the mean is 80, standard deviation is 10. So its z value will be 100 minus 80, 20 divided by 10 is 2. So this value of 100 is two standard deviations above the mean. Now, another value of 10, its mean is 8, standard deviation is 1. That is also two standard deviations above the mean, right? So when you have one attribute who, which is measured in these dimensions, another attribute measured in these dimensions, once you standardize them, they become commensurate. That's the beauty of standardization. And once you do that, no single attribute will be able to dominate the distance calculations. So let's see how it looks when we apply it to our income and age data. So we've got incomes and ages, incomes ranging from 